Hi, and welcome back to UC Connections. I'm really excited about this episode. Finally, uh, you've seen him on many of the other episodes. Chad Simon and I are finally getting to come together and have a conversation about what all this means for you, our partners. So Chad, I'm excited to have you here. We were talking earlier about the democratization of UC. You've used that term in a couple of your blogs and some of your white papers. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more what you mean by that? Really, it's it's kind of happened in the past, I'd say 10, 10 years in, in, in earnest, really, where um, a couple of things have happened. A, the barriers to entry, um, which there were quite a few there used to be to, to uh, being a, a, a company that deployed UC solutions to customers. The barriers to entry were, were quite a few, and most of those are gone now, which, um, which are great. Um, one of the biggest things that's gone is the cost. The, the, the barrier to entry for initial installations, especially on more complex solutions, used to be gigantic. Now, where companies such as Zoom and 8x8 and Ring Central, they, they have the infrastructure there already. Um, it's not an investment that, be, that needs to be made. Um, another area where the barriers to entry have been removed and made it much easier for for resellers and our partners to adapt to new platforms is the area of of uh, technical ability. Right, the the technical ability pretty much comes with most platforms now. You don't need that 25 that staff of 25 year tenured engineers to to run those platforms so that's those are really the two main two main factors on why on on the whys of democratization of uc in in some ways it almost sounds like you're saying that many of our partners who who dabble in kind of the uc endpoint world maybe worked in the video conferencing world it sounds like you're saying they could actually do a lot more with a very little type of uh, upfront investment. Is that, is, is that accurate? Absolutely, and, and what it really does is it allows partners to focus on, on the things that really matter, right? Instead of, instead of worrying about, um, do my technicians have up-to-date certifications? Do my PMs have up-to-date, uh, up-to-date certs on, on, on their method of, of product or project management? Now it's, it's, how do I make the user experience or my customer's experience the best that I possibly can throughout every phase of, of the of the project, right? So I think that's that's the best part about that. So what would you say, you know me, I love lists of three, right? So for our partners today who are starting to see this expansion, the ability to do contact center, uh, for their customers, which in the past was such an enterprise play. The ability to really cross platform, doesn't matter what platform the end customer is using, they can help support it. What are the three pivot points that you see that our partners need to do today where to be successful in this new market? So we can call them pivot points, we can call them uh, pillars, we can call them what you what you like, but to me, I think there's there's three pillars or, or pivot points if you want to call them that. And the first one really is uh, services. We we have to make sure that part of our business is is based on services. And I understand that there's there's a thousand, a million different ways to succeed, and and you don't always have to have services or you don't always have to have these three pillars. But I'm just talking in general, right? you're going to want to focus part of your business or part of what you provide on services because A, you make higher margins on services and B, it keeps you closer to what's what's new in the industry uh, just by just by being what it is, right? Because services always follow the, the, the new products in, in the industries. To me, services are a way to, to control that customer experience and move Absolutely. from just delivering a bunch of boxes to delivering the experience that the end customer wants and really can have now with the technology the way it is. Absolutely, absolutely, that's that's a great point. And then, you know, the, the next pillar really should be platforms. And and there's a couple different ways to, to solve the platform problem. We see shops all the time or, or our partners all the time that, that focus on one platform and they focus on doing 
everything or as much as possible for that platform, i.e. providing services, providing value, add, value added um, software or specialized white glove services for that specific platform. Um, and that's, that's a great way to succeed, but more and more, and what the industry and, and the way it's evolved is allowing folks to do is to is to cross platform. It's to not focus at all on a platform. It's to rely on on our partners out there, the the Zooms, the eight by eights, the the Ring Centrals, and the Ingram Micros of the world, by the way, to to help you along that path and and make it to where you don't need that special specialization. So I, I think that's that's probably the biggest thing. That, that's exciting in the market right now is that is that there's so many great platforms out there so many great solutions out there and you don't need to choose just one I, I, as a as a technology geek it's super exciting to me yeah i mean I, I mean you know even with us internally we've got uh you know some of us are leveraging a blue jeans platform some of us are using zoom some of us are using microsoft teams we've got cisco platforms really from the, the key to me is it's who am I interacting with? When I talk to uh, Verizon, obviously we're talking on the Blue Jeans platform. When we're talking to Microsoft, we're obviously talking on the Teams platform. So your point about kind of having that cross platform knowledge is key for uh, a service provider or a buyer customer in today's environment because you never know what your customer may be interacting with. They may be a X platform customer but all of their customers may be something different. So having that cross pl platform knowledge is, is, to me, that's a really great point. So you said there's three, and if I know you, I'm guessing the third one ha has to do with experience. Am I right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. The, it, I think it's a really exciting time in our, in our industry today, just because of the focus on the experience. And it's, it's a, it's it's really exciting because it's not just a focus on the customer experience anymore. The 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 pandemic has shown us that we also need to focus on the employee experience, right? And yep. and we're starting to see how those two dynamics work together. The employee experience affects the customer experience and vice versa. And really seeing seeing the focus shift from the professionals in the industry to you know, a, a holistic experience is is really exciting. And and it, I said at the beginning, a, a a focus on the experience is is absolutely what the the democratization of UC allows allows a, a professional to do nowadays. It's 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 taken almost all of the tactical um, the tactical chores off of, off of your off of your desk and allowed you to focus on what really matters, which is as we as as we've seen the the customer experience, the employee experience, the holistic experience. So, I think those are definitely the three things that 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 partners who are concerned or or who want to grow in the future should definitely you know place a high level of focus on each of those three pillars. No, that's great. I mean, you're absolutely right. The, the cool thing about partnering with Ingram Micro is we have the ability to help you in any of those areas, whether it's learning how to use the platforms, selling the platforms, installing them, supporting them, whether it's those delivering those professional services and helping that enablement because enablement is key or creating that out of the box experience that you get with an Apple iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy where you're up and running very quickly and the end customer experience is fantastic. Contact your Inger Michael salesperson and talk to them about how our UC team can help you in those areas. Chad, let me say, it's about time we finally got to do a video together. I'm so glad we had a chance to have this chat and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon and uh, catching your next video as well. No, it's been a great time. I enjoy it. We'll, we'll definitely have to do it again sometime soon and uh, can't wait for what's on the horizon. Absolutely, thanks. Hi everyone, Justine Watson, Distribution Channel Account Manager at Poly, and I'm here to talk to you about a really exciting new Poly headset, the Voyager Focus 2. It's a new product that's launching on May 11th, and I'm gonna give you a little sneak preview of what it's all about. So here's the box that it comes in, open it up, and check out what's in it. The headset, the charging stand, all the cables that you need, and a nice little quick start guide. 
So when you take everything out of the box, what's really cool is that it's very simple to set up and use. So you've got the headset and you've got the charging stand. And this charging stand is uh, hooks into your PC uh, via USB. So what's really cool about this new Voyager Focus 2 is that it's super comfortable. So you can wear it all day long. It also has an indicator built into the ear so that people can see when you're actively on a call. It's got active noise canceling so that uh, background noise um, is not going to disturb me when I'm trying to focus on my meeting. And it's also got really cool um, poly acoustic fence technology built into the boom so that all the background noise isn't going to be heard by anybody else that's uh, joining my meeting that's not here. So again, you've got the headset, you've got the charging stand, you throw it in the charging stand and it charges. Um, this is the Voyager Focus 2 UC withstand. There is a separate version, which is the Voyager Focus 2 UC, uh, and it does not come with the stand. But both the UC and the stand version come with this uh, USB uh, key. And so basically you can connect uh, to your computer via this key as well. You charge via the cable though that comes with it. And uh, there's another version called the Voyager Focus 2 Office. And that comes with a little bit of a different stand and an additional cable so that if you choose to add it to a desktop phone, you've got the capability to do that. So really, really great technology. So simple to set up and use, very, very comfortable. It's got polyacoustic fence. It's got active noise canceling. It only takes two hours to fully charge the headset and you can have active talk time for up to 19 hours. So it lasts a really, really long time. So great new product, um, Ingram has them in their system and they're gonna be fully stocked and ready to sell uh, on launch date on May 11th. So if you've got any questions or concerns, please reach out to your Ingram sales team or the Poly team at Ingram, their MD team, uh, for any questions or concerns. But take a look, great, great, great new product. We're really excited about it.